Hello, here on the Digital Orphanage I often repair old computers and electronics that have long been forgotten about by their original manufacturers. But in most cases that was something that happened 20, 30, 40 years ago. Now is it me or does it seem like the time that something initially goes on sale and the time that it's discontinued is getting closer and closer together? Take for example this Oculus Rift S virtual reality headset. Initially sold in May 2019, it was discontinued in June 2021, merely two years later. And now this one is about as much use as a paperweight. Not because the headset doesn't work, but because the cable that connects it to a computer doesn't work. And can you buy a new cable? Of course not, they've discontinued that as well. But you can buy second-hand cables from a well-known auction site. But at £90, is it really worth it? In fact, you can buy the headset by itself for £25, and it's crazy that the headset, with its high-definition screen and five cameras and all the electronics, is worth a fraction of what a cable's worth. So is it possible to repair the cable I've got already? Well, that's something I'm going to find out. So let's go over to the workbench and take a look. The issue I have is that when the headset is plugged in, the drivers show the USB connection is good, but unfortunately not the display port. On one end of the cable, there are standard USB and display port plugs to connect to a computer. Both enter this block, which combines these connections into just one cable to give better freedom of movement, which terminates in this 42 pin connector for the headset. Comparing it to the 20 pin display port plug, the pin density is much higher. On the headset there's a clip to hold the cable, and this is where the first of several kinks in the cable has manifested itself, which I think could be a likely point for a break in the cable. Further down the cable are a couple more kinks, where it was likely run over by an office chair. But before I resort to cutting open the cable, I want to see if probing with a multimeter yields any useful information about how the cable is wired internally. And this is where I hit my first problem. The probes don't fit in the display port plug, let alone the smaller headset connector. The solution is simple and cheap. Just tape fabric pins to the end of the probes. And a little insulation tape pulled tight does a good enough job. The first pass is to get a rough idea of whether there are any direct connections or not. Some pins are connected, but others show resistance, which would mean this may be some kind of electronics hidden in the cable. And that's likely the reason for this warning sign not to throw the cable in the bin. My second pass is to test each pin's continuity in relation to the ground connection. And at my age, the 42 pin connector was too small without magnification. Eventually, I map out the connectors as best I can. The DisplayPort, USB and headset connector share a lot of common ground connections, and the USB data circuit seems fine between the USB and headset plugs, along with the power connections. That's not surprising, given that the drivers see a good USB data connection to the headset. But the pairs of display signals aren't directly connected, so there's definitely something more complicated going on inside this cable. Hopefully it's just a broken wire I can resolder within the cable, but where to start? Well, let's start at the point of the first kink in the cable. Nurse, pass the scalpel please.
Inside there's some woven ground shielding, which probably acts as armour too, along with lots of strands of what looks like nylon or polyester. My guess is this helps prevent cable stretch from breaking the wires. There's a mixture of wires, but everything's too tightly packed. So I have no choice but to carefully cut away the shield and strands. Exposing three red wires, a couple of twisted and shielded wire bundles, a white wire and a grey sleeve which feels like it contains yet more wires. These tiny wires don't want to stay still enough under the microscope for me to be able to cut into them though. My friend here is some blue tack, or in this case, white tack. Cutting open the grey sleeve does indeed expose yet more wires. They look very thin and fiddly, and there's a bit of damage to one of the strands. I expect I did that cutting it open. I'll come back to these later I think. These red wires are positively chunky in comparison. And the shield bundles turn out to be twisted pairs with a ground wire. I take my time testing between the various wire cores and the pins on the headset connector, adding the wire colours to my diagram. I then expose the wires near the combiner section and test the continuity through the long cable length. Everything seems fine so far. So lastly, it's time to check the really thin wires within the grey sheathing. I carefully tried to expose the wire core, but the telltale glint of metal wasn't to be seen. Just how fine are these wires? And that's when I find out they aren't wires. They're fibre optic cables. Damn. And as a wise man once said, that's it man. Game over man, it's game over. Or is it? Until next time, goodbye.